Have you ever wanted to build an equipment finance application that completely integrated with Salesforce, but don't have the developers or the resources? Well, I may have a solution for you. You see, a couple of weeks ago, a client came to me and they showed me their PDF, which was their current process. And their dream was to completely digitalize that process. I had a look and I was like, oh, we can, we can do that. We took it away and in a matter of a couple of days, we managed to build a portal. Fully no code, fully drag and drop. And to my client's delight, I actually gave the entire thing away for free, which would have cost them thousands and thousands. So let's get into it. This is really exciting. I want to show you the before and then I'll walk you through the after. This is what the equipment finance application looks like today. It's a two page PDF. It begins with taking company information such as company name, date established, proceeding to the owners. A company can have multiple owners, they could be guarantors, we need to know their ownership stake. That is why there is a table, so multiple entities can be added. And advancing to is references. References the same format as the owners, where we get to add multiple records directly under that table. Now turning our attention to the equipment information, this is where we get to describe equipment, the hard cost, the soft cost, and then segueing into transaction structure, which tells you the desired base terms and desired structure. Now let's shift our gears to the financial information. These are additional documents that need to be provided as a proof to supplement this financial application. Finally, we have signatures. So these need to be signed in order for the application to be completed. So that's what the current process looks like the PDF of doom, I'd like to call it. Mainly because, look, if it's 10 or 20 applications, sure, you can manually input the data into Salesforce. But if you're a company who's looking to scale in hundreds, if not thousands of applications, that is a huge issue. Not only do you have to get all that set of information manually inputted, which means you need six to 10 members of admin to, to do all of that, it's a bit crazy. Also, the experience from a customer side is not great. You know, they, they're giving you all that information. And then if there's some information missing, they have to email you back and forth. As you can see, it's, it's, it's not a clunky process, but we changed it. We made it for the better today. Now let's get into the build. The build is the exciting part because you don't need a Salesforce developer to, to be able to do this. You just need to be an admin who understands Salesforce and building this is just point and click. So let's get into it. Let me show you the build. It's very, very exciting. So that is the start of the transformation where we get to take the PDF and build it into a portal builder using complete drag and drop functionality. No code is ever needed. However, that is just the starting point. We really want to convert this entire experience and have the data going into Salesforce. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the entire process from start to finish the transformation. Here it is. So the first section we are going to focus on is company information. We've got the company name, legal entity type, business address, federal tax ID, state of formation, date established, website, and then linking that is the primary contact, contact title, telephone, and email. In order to do this, we're gonna move forward to a form and 
I'm going to show you how I quickly pre-populate the data to save us some time typing all of this up. We've got all the details ready to go. As I go ahead and enter the federal tax ID, once this has been entered, I'm going to go ahead and click submit. As you can see that we've got primary conda Harry Dalton linked to this application as well, which means we're going to create multiple records inside of Salesforce, starting with the account. This is the first record that will be created. We've got all the details from the account side. We've got the name, we've got the website, we've got the entity type, date of incorporation, state of incorporation, as well as the billing address. Supplementing that is Harry Dalton, which is the second record that's been created. Now, Harry has got his own set of information, which is email linked to the account to establish a relationship. The third record that's created is the finance application. This is where we get to store all the information to the equipment finance application. And then the fourth record that we've created here is the finance application contact. This is a junction object between contact and the finance application links to the contact ID and as you can see, it's all well and set in progress. In order to continue the application, I need to log in. And you may be wondering why, why is this necessary? Consider these points. If you're able to log in, you're able to verify the identity of the applicant. They are able to log in, save and resume, avoiding the need to fill out data repeatedly. Not risking sensitive financial information in a public form, the portal will provide you the security. Finally, what if the customer has multiple applications they need to track? Logging in will allow you to do just that. Now, this is a login page. In order to log in, all I need to have is a record in Salesforce with an email address. Yes, you heard it right. Simple email in a record. No extra license needed. I'll go ahead and enter my email, click continue, at this point, Tyson will check if their email exists in Salesforce. If it does, it will send that email a two-factor authorization code to the email or via text. You can copy this code and simply enter into the portal. Once you've entered the code, you log in, voila, here we are. You can see all your applications, anything that's in progress, anything that's rejected or anything otherwise. Click continue application and we will pre-fill all the data that you've already submitted, saving you time and hassle. And if there is anything that is missing, you can just simply go ahead and update it. And that is the power of Titan, the ability to read the data from Salesforce in real time, allowing you to log in with the minimum of fuss and also allowing you to update records in real, real time. The next section we're going to focus on is owners. We get to collect multiple entities who could be guarantors, could be owners. In PDF, this is pretty straightforward. You get to simply add the columns and off you go. But when you do this with Salesforce, it is challenging. Not only will you need to be able to create multiple records, you need to be able to link it to the application. So let me show you how we do this today. This is a really exciting piece. Continuing with the application, we'll go ahead and click next, which will take us onto the next page. This page will load all the existing finance application contact. You can see the example of Harry Dalton, which was created earlier, linked as a finance application contact to this finance application. Now this record exists and we're able to bring it back. Now we will go ahead and add additional records. So we'll go and click the add contact, quickly pre-fill the details. We can use a bit of conditional logic to see if this person is owner and a guarantor, which means I have to add the percentage, the social security number, and as I click submit, the beauty of this, it will write back to Salesforce and it will read that result back in real time. If we go back, quickly give it a refresh in Salesforce, you can see the new record being added. We'll do this again. We'll go and add another contact. Select the details. Again, this person is an owner and a guarantor. Add the percentage, add the social security number, click submit. And again, the record writes back and reads back. Consider this, what if I wanted to update one of these records? Let's say I got the value of the percentage wrong. It's very simple. I can just go in there, change it, make the modifications, tab out, and this is now updated in Salesforce. 
That is the beauty of read and write to Salesforce in real time. Following that, we have references. Now we need to be able to collect multiple references and be able to link to Salesforce. That is the objective here. In this PDF, it's fairly easy, but in Salesforce, we're gonna create a junction object that links to the finance application and allow our applicant to create multiple references. Now clicking next, it will take me to the references page. And let me give you a brief overview on how I plan to add these. We have the finance application, and then we have a junction object, finance application references, which links to the contact, which allows us to create this record. So I click the add reference button, quickly add some data. And as I click submit, just like before, it will write back to Salesforce and read that result back. If you head over to Salesforce, you'll be able to see upon refresh, the record is now created. Let's go and add another one. We'll click add references, quickly fill the data, click submit. It will write back to Salesforce and we'll read that result back. What if I have entered a record incorrectly and I want to delete it? Well, all I have to do is click delete and the record is deleted and it will also delete it from Salesforce. So a complete sync from references into the application, everything nicely linked together, and there you have it. The next part that is up for transformation is equipment information. A lot of data in this particular section is simply going to update the record, but there is a lot of conditional logic as well as uh, record creation, such as a landlord name, person, contact. So let's show you how this works and how this gets created in Salesforce. As I click next day, it will take me onto the next page. And this is the page that I just highlighted a moment ago. It's got a layer of conditional logic inside of it. When I click on something, it will expand. And if I unselect it, it will close the section itself. If I go back to Salesforce, if you look ahead, the three sections, equipment description, equipment purchase info, and equipment location is something we're gonna be updating. So I'll quickly go ahead and fill out some data. I'm gonna go ahead and choose some values, make sure those relevant sections are checked. As you can see, it expands really nicely and conditionally. If I click next, this will update in Salesforce. If you see upon refresh, all the data is now nicely populated. Have a look at the last section. James Anderson, who was a contact, is now a contact created in Salesforce and via lookup, we've inserted James into the finance application. Beautifully done. And now we move on to the next section. Now the next section is transaction structure and financial information. The structure will update the record in Salesforce. However, the financial information are a bunch of different documents that need to be uploaded. If you do this today via PDF, you have to chase them in an email, but in Salesforce, this becomes a breeze. So without a further ado, let me show you how we do this and upload them to Salesforce. Now I've got my transaction structure data. I get to select desired structure. The credit has already been added. All I have to do is click next. This will update the record in Salesforce. So if I just head over to the structure section, you'll be able to see that once upon refresh, there is all the data that we've just entered. The next part is really, really exciting because this is all about file uploads. So it takes me to the next section where I have to upload financial documents for this application to be approved. Now I can go to my docs. I can select different PDFs. In fact, any file type can be uploaded. And I'm just gonna go ahead and enter the data. Now once I've uploaded these files, you'll notice I've actually incorrectly uploaded some files. And the reason why I've done that so I can show you that you can delete your files as well as preview them. So we have this preview functionality where you can see the document that you're about to upload and make sure it's correct. If it's not, you can delete it. And then once you delete it, you can go ahead and upload the correct documents as needed. Now, once the documents are uploaded and I go ahead and click submit, what this will do, this will check off the, set, uh, the check boxes in Salesforce, which are supporting documents. So you can see that the three documents are uploaded. There are three check boxes checked off in Salesforce. Supplementing that, the files are now in Salesforce against the application. This will save you so much headache rather than having chases via email. 
that's the advantage of doing this with Salesforce as opposed to doing it all on PDF. Onto the final section, it's all about getting this document e-signed. It needs to be signed by the applicant and then the authorizer. So today this will be signed by hand and pushed into Salesforce or uploaded manually. But with Titan, we're able to do this digitally and I can't wait to show you the final result because we're also able to get all that data from Salesforce into the document while it's being signed. So let's go. Now when I click next here, it will trigger Titan Sign. What Titan Sign does, it reads all the data from Salesforce into a document for you. You can see every dynamic data from owners to references is nicely tabled inside the document. All the data, equipment information, all the checkboxes, everything from all the documents submitted have been checked off into the document, making it breeze for you. Now all Harry Dalton has to do as the applicant, simply sign the document. Once it's signed, it will go off to the authorized owner of the application within Salesforce, who will now see this document and also sign in. So if I head over to the email, I being the authorizer or the owner, I can click on the document, have a look at it and say, okay, well, everything looks good. Everything uh, matches up to the data in Salesforce and the authorizer will simply have to sign it. And once it's signed, the data must go back into Salesforce. So once we head over to Salesforce, we look into the file section and you will find there are two files. First, there is a signed document with all the data inside of it, both signatures. I'll zoom into a little bit for you. You can see the document signed by Harry Dawson, Titan DXP. And supplementing that is a tracking log, which will tell you when the document was sent, when it was viewed, which IP address it was signed by, all the data nicely for your audit purposes. And finally, here's the confetti. The application is accepted and the entire process is completed. So a lot to take in, but the transformation speaks for itself. Gone from a complete PDF that requires manual entry and admin work to a self-service portal, which is secure. Now, I'd like to give you this portal for free. What I'd like you to do is just simply get me on LinkedIn send me a message and I'll happily have it transferred over to you, saving you thousands in implementation cost. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.